This is a continuation of the storefront problem. In the first part of the problem, we uh, made a determination about whether or not to retain or reject the null hypothesis. Now we have a follow-up question that we suppose that the redesign actually did work and that the average of used to be 3218 is now 3318. How likely is it that a sample of 45 days will come to the wrong conclusion by failing to reject the null hypothesis? Uh, this is an example of a type 2 error that the null hypothesis has indeed uh, is indeed false and the population mean has increased but we make the wrong decision by deciding to retain the null hypothesis. Uh, the figure on the screen is exactly the same figure that uh, was used in the previous video uh, where we worked out uh, whether or not to retain or reject the null hypothesis and that's on purpose. Uh, this rejection region is necessary in order to be able to uh, solve this problem. So the and to get started, we knew that the alpha, draw it here, the value of alpha was given to be equal to 0.05. And so we used that value of alpha to determine the critical region, so 1.64485, and uh, that uh, is going to be our cutoff. So now let's figure out what's the chance of, uh, that a sample of 45 days would come to the, an incorrect conclusion. Uh, to do this, we need to change this critical value to uh, x's. So the x critical we get by unconverting from standard units. So it used to be that the critical value was um, it's 3218 plus 1.64485 times the size of a standard error. The standard deviation was given to be 287 divided by the square root of n, which was square root of 45. And so doing the arithmetic, which I encourage you to try on your own, we get 3288 uh, 372. Okay, in other words, so if z is bigger than 1.64485, we reject the null hypothesis. Stated another way, if the sample average is bigger than 3288.372, then we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so the next step is to figure out what's the chance of this happening. So beta is the probability that we reject the, or retain the null hypothesis when the population mean has changed to 3318. Uh, what does it mean to retain the null hypothesis? We retain the null hypothesis when the sample average is less than 3288. 0.372. That's when we retain the null hypothesis. Now we convert to standard units and use the uh, bell curve. So we get the probability that a standard normal random variable would be less than 3288.372 minus the new mean of 33.18. divided by 287 over the square root of 45. All right, let's catch our breath here. The old mean of 3218 was used to construct this number, 3288, and that's this number right here. So the, the old mean is reflected inside of this number, while the new mean is reflected inside of this number. So that's the probability that z is less than whatever this quotient is. So let's do the arithmetic. And we get uh, negative 0 0.6925. 
and then we use either Excel or your calculator to figure out the probability of this event happening. And so uh, using Excel, we get pro prob so norm s dist of negative 0.0695, six, six, negative 0 0.6925 for a probability of about 24.43%. And so that is the probability of uh, incorrectly re re uh, retaining the null hypothesis even though the um, alternative hypothesis is correct. Uh, 1 minus beta is the power. So the power of the test under these conditions would be 1 minus beta. And 1 minus beta for this particular problem would be 0.7557. Okay, so that is the logic of how we solve this. We also discussed in class a, a shortcut formula for doing this problem, which we'll discuss now. So on the screen are the formulas that we discussed in class for finding the uh, probability beta um, for uh, performing a level alpha test. In our case, uh, the form of the alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than something, and so I don't need these lower two formulas for the problem at hand. And in our case, the old um, null hypothesis was 3218. That was the, uh, the null hypothesis was that the sample mean was 3218. Under the alternative hypothesis, the mu prime uh, mu is now 3318. Okay, z alpha is going to be the cutoff value that we had. So 1.644485. And so beta will be equal to uh, phi, more on that in a second of 1.64485 plus, well, mu naught minus mu prime is negative 100 divided by 287 over the square root of 45. So phi of, we do the arithmetic, and we get the same number back again, negative 0 0.6925. And recall that the function phi is the cumulative distribution function for the bell curve. In other words, the area to the left of negative 0 0.0625. So that is exactly in Excel using the command norm s dist of negative 0.9625. So the phi in when implemented in Excel is going to be the norm s dist command. It would also be the normal CDF command in the uh, TI calculator uh, if you use negative 10 to the 99 as uh, your left endpoint. So basically the phi command is the area to the left and that we get the same answer we had before 0.2443. Now clearly it's shorter using the um, command or using the formula that's on the screen right here. So clearly that's shorter than what we did earlier. Um, we I did the previous method to emphasize where the uh, where this formula comes from. That this is the previous formula basically or the formula here basically unwraps what was done for the null hypothesis and figures out the new area under the curve that has to be determined for uh, determining the value of beta.